Hi, uh, my name is uh, Chris Antenno. I am uh, a, a medical doctor and uh, the medical director for Regenerative Sciences. And this is part of our Stem Cell Science for Everyone series. The goal of this series is just to educate uh, uh, the average person about uh, issues regarding stem cells. Obviously, there's a lot of buzz in the media, and this is still a very complex topic. So uh, today, the topic is, are there any issues with using stem cells from someone else versus your own cells? Stem cell transplants can come from two sources. Uh, the first source is what's called an allograft, or that stem cells from somebody else. So by definition, all embryonic stem cell transplants would be allografts, meaning they come from somebody else. Second type is an autograft, or stem cells from the same person. So that's using your own stem cells. If I get stem cells from somebody else, will they be rejected? That's a great question. The answer is no. True stem cells don't have any self-identification antigens. Those are called HLA antigens. So what that means is that they don't need to be matched or typed like blood. But that's very important because obviously if you hear that uh, getting a stem cell transplant from someone else needs to be matched, then you're not getting true stem cells or at least you're getting other things that are probably blood related or other tissue related that, that aren't uh, true stem cells. Is it better to use younger cells? Yes, it is likely better to use younger cells. So stem cells from a younger person will likely perform better than stem cells from an older person. Now that's not hard and fast, but in general, the research that's been done supports this. So if we take cells, for instance, from a 20-year-old, we would expect that those cells would perform better to repair tissue than cells from an 80 or 90-year-old. So clearly there are differences. So if the cells don't cause rejection and younger ones are better, why not just use someone else's young cells? Well, that certainly makes sense, except there's one little problem. And that problem was just identified in March of 2007. There was this paper that was published, the induction of senile osteoporosis in normal mice by intra bone marrow bone marrow transplantation from osteoporosis prone mice. Sounds really complex, um, but it's an important paper, and if you are considering a stem cell transplant, an incredibly important paper. Uh, in fact, uh, this paper could change your life quite literally. So let's look at what it said. What happened in this study? Well, you start with old mice that have been bred for osteoporosis. Osteoporosis is thinning of the bones. So these are mice who have brittle bones because they're old. And you take some bone marrow and bone marrow derived mesenchymal stem cells from those mice and you isolate out the stem cells and then you inject those stem cells into a young mouse, so a different mouse uh, that's young, that has no problems. And what the authors of this study found was that the young mice ended up getting osteoporosis in those areas where the stem cells were transplanted. Big problem. Essentially, what that meant was that the genetic disease of osteoporosis that was being experienced by these old mice got transferred to the young mice. So you have a, uh, a young mouse who's getting a genetic disease from an old mouse. And in those areas where this transplant occurred, the young mouse got the osteoporosis. This is a huge study, and I can't uh, emphasize too much what this study so let's look at that. What does all this mean? Well, it may be possible to transmit a genetic disease from one person to another through a stem cell transplant. That's a very big deal. Again, let's think about that. A genetic disease. So let's say that you uh, don't have any known genetic diseases. You're 40 years old and you get an embryonic stem cell transplant from an embryo that has a gene that carries 
a risk for a 500% increased chance of a fatal bone cancer. What this study may mean is that if you get the cells from that embryo, then you may also get the increased risk for the bone cancer. Big problem. And one, again, that I, I can't underestimate. Can we just screen the donor for these genetic diseases? Sure, that would make sense, but there's, again, a, a pragmatic problem. The answer to that question is not yet. We can't yet screen the donor for these genetic diseases. We w likely won't have that type of capability for 20 to 30 years. So sure, in, in 2020 or 2030, we'll probably have the ability to screen for pretty much all known genetic diseases at that time. But until then, we can't screen the donors. So uh, even though you might hear of screening that's being done, we can't screen for this stuff yet. So we can screen for certain diseases the donor might have, like let's say certain infections, but we can't screen, for instance, for that risk for bone cancer at this point. So this is, does this mean that all hope is lost for stem cell therapy? And the answer is likely no. Uh, if you use your own cells, you won't pick up any genetic diseases you don't already have. So that's the nice thing about autologous transfers or using your own cells. What implications does this have for the burgeoning stem cell industry? Well, the implications are, are regrettably major. Essentially, for the next 20 to 30 years, the only type of cell therapy regarding stem cells that's going to be absolutely free of this risk of transmitting genetic diseases will be autologous cells, using your own cells. What does this mean for middle-aged people? Well, obviously, if you're 40 years old now and you uh, get some cartilage damage in the knee and that needs to be repaired and you use stem cells to do that, you're going to want to use some of those cells that are harvested now to repair that cartilage damage, but you're also going to want to freeze some cells for future use. So if you're 60 years old and you have a heart attack and those cells need to be used to repair that heart muscle, that you'll be using 40-year-old cells rather than 60-year-old cells. And that's, a, that's, a, that's likely going to be a very big deal. So how can middle-aged or older cells be used to repair tissue? Well, that is a, a huge question. And in all likelihood will be by discovering ways of augmenting or making better the specific repair abilities of older cells. So what that means at the end of the day is we're going to have to find ways to improve the ability of older cells to repair tissue. Do you have experience in using older cells? Yes, at RSI we do have this experience. We've done, for instance, our own uh, experimentation on how to improve the ability of mesenchymal, adult mesenchymal cells, to repair cartilage. And again, I think these problems are going to have to be dealt with specifically. I don't think it's going to be possible to take 80-year-old stem cells and reinfuse them back into an 80-year-old and have them do much good. I think that those cells are going to have to be uh, augmented in some way or certain treatments will have to be added so that the biologic activity of those cells is improved. We have experience in certain tissues in improving the biologic activity of those cells. So in summary, using donor stem cells likely puts the person receiving those cells at risk. It's probable that donor stem cells can transmit genetic diseases. We can't yet screen for most of these genetic diseases. It's a big problem. This likely means that using autologous, your own cells, is the only safe option at this moment for stem cell therapy. Again, thank you for joining us uh, here today. 
the goal with the stem cell science for everyone series is just to educate uh, consumers about all of the issues regarding stem cell therapy. Thanks again.